The film opens with a young woman being asked questions by a computer. The questions she's being asked are about what she wants in a potential partner. We learn the woman's name is Zoe, and that she is being interviewed in a laboratory setting while being observed by someone behind a screen. The scene cuts to Zoe arriving at the lab, and we are shown a news report in which the man who was previously observing her answering questions, is being interviewed. The news report states that the man's name is Cole Ainsley, and that he has been hired by a company called Relationist Laboratories to design synthetic human companions. In other words, robot companions. Cole works for an offshoot of Relationist Laboratories, a startup, that deals with this specific task. Cole explains that his goal is to create synthetic companions that will never leave you, and he believes this will result in better relationships. Cole is observing what is presumably a new synthetic person, stating that it is ready for more. The scene cuts to Cole at home, while he listens to music and goes through potential matches his computer has come up with. Meanwhile, Zoe is at a bar by herself, and the scene cuts simultaneously between Zoe and Cole, to show how incredibly single these two individuals are. Zoe and Cole are both back at work at the lab. Zoe walks in, offering Cole a caffeinated beverage. Cole is excited to show Zoe the new synthetic human he has ready, telling her that he has installed something called, emotional packets. Cole explains that these emotional packets are real memories of emotional events, and that this will give the new synthetic human actual emotions. The synthetic human begins to talk about a partner cheating on him, and looks depressed as he thinks about the event. Cole explains that the memory is his own, and that it stems from him scoring a low compatibility score with his previous partner, Emma. Zoe is amazed, and notes that the synthetic human is so realistic that no one would feel alone if they had one. Just then, Cole's phone begins to ring, Emma is calling him. He decides to leave and take the call, much to Zoe's disappointment. Later, Cole is sitting at a desk with a child, presumably his son. Cole spends some quality time with his son, whom we presume he doesn't get to see much due to his job, and it's revealed that Cole and Emma are divorced. After Cole tucks his son into bed, he and Emma have a conversation in the kitchen. Emma reluctantly tells Cole that she's seeing someone, which Cole looks disappointed to hear. She urges him to take some time off work and give himself some free time. Cole kisses her goodbye and takes his leave, an awkward encounter indeed. The next day, Zoe is at the lab, when suddenly the synthetic human walks in and greets her. He also now has hair. Zoe is surprised by this, as the synthetic human, whose name is Ash, asks if she wants coffee, which she turns down. Ash informs her that he came online that morning and so far, has spent the day reading and researching, as Cole aims to begin his socialization immediately. He wants to learn to dance, which makes Zoe laugh. Zoe is evaluating a couple's compatibility, and tells them that they have a 75% chance of a successful relationship, much to the couple's delight. She then later goes to find Cole and sees that he is teaching Ash how to dance. Zoe interrupts them and asks Cole if she can be evaluated by the machine again, although she enjoys her dance with Ash first. Zoe begins her evaluation, as Cole and Ash observe her from another room. The computer asks her what she wants in a partner. She responds that she wants them to see things in her that no one else sees, while looking back toward Cole. When asked what she wouldn't want her partner to know, she admits that she used to be heavy, and that her relationship with food still hasn't improved. The evaluation soon ends, though Zoe looks somewhat dissatisfied. After the evaluation, Zoe is at a computer screen, and enters her and Cole's names. Zoe is curious to find out the compatibility score the two would get, though is very disappointed to see that the computer states their compatibility is 0%. It seems as though she might have a growing crush on her colleague. Zoe asks why they have got such a low score, to which the computer responds that there is a fundamental incompatibility, without expanding on what this incompatibility is. The scene cuts to a couple dancing while they're being observed by researchers behind a screen, including Zoe and Ash. Zoe explains to Ash that this is a clinical trial for a new called Benisol, which triggers the feelings of falling in love for the first time. She also explains that the couple they are observing have been married for 35 years, and the drug has helped them to rekindle their love. Ash then asks Zoe if she would like to take the drug with him, and that he thinks they should be a couple. Zoe harshly turns him down, brutally informing him that what he's feeling for her is just programming. Ash is visibly disappointed, though Zoe suggests that his socialization shouldn't only be confined to a lab. Later that night, Zoe, Ash, and the rest of the staff are at a bar together. Ash and Zoe are talking, while Cole is astonished at how far Ash has come with his social skills in such a short space of time. Zoe sees Cole watching them, heads over and reveals she wants to show him something in the basement of the bar. Cole is intrigued, so follows Zoe downstairs, where she leads him to a brothel, where synthetics perform services for paying clients. A shady place indeed, lit with a gloomy pink light throughout. Cole does not look very pleased to be there, but Zoe points out a synthetic named Jules at the brothel, stating that she has the most advanced operating system out of all the workers. Cole, instead, asks about a synthetic sat on her own. The mistress tells him that the synthetic is to be shut down. 
Cole, looking unimpressed, walks out of the brothel, and Zoe follows. Zoe apologizes to Cole for bringing him to the establishment. She only brought him to show him how synthetics are being used as companions, even though this is not the sort of companionship Cole had in mind when he started his research. Cole promises Zoe he's not upset with her. Zoe then confesses that she ran a match on the computer for them, and Cole is interested in hearing the result. However, he isn't surprised to hear that they have a 0% compatibility score, though Zoe doesn't understand it, as she admits that she thinks about him all the time. Cole, taking her confession in his stride, wants to show her something. Cole and Zoe arrive at Zoe's apartment. Cole takes a pair of keys out of his pocket, and she's confused as to why he has them. Inside, Cole asks her if she's ever ran a search for herself on the internet, to which Zoe denies she has. Cole tells her that if she did, she may be surprised that there is no information there. Zoe, now visibly confused, asks Cole again why he has keys to her apartment. Cole replies that her apartment belongs to the lab, and that he rented it himself only a few months ago. He asks her if she's ever wondered why there's no food in her fridge, or if she's ever thought about why everything in the apartment seems to be new. Zoe, now speechless, doesn't respond. Then Cole drops the bomb, he tells Zoe she doesn't oversee the synthetics department at the lab, she's a creation of it. Zoe is incredibly upset, refusing to believe him. Cole goes on to explain that the objective was to keep this a secret, and to observe how people would interact with her, to see if they could tell. Cole asks Zoe to look closely at her eyes in the mirror, as she doesn't believe what he's telling her. Zoe sees that it's true, her eyes are artificial, while Cole apologizes. Zoe, heartbroken, runs out of the apartment and into the street, as Cole can do nothing but watch her leave. Zoe runs back to the lab, where Ash comforts her, confessing that he's jealous of her. She actually got to exist as a human, whereas he was told he was a synthetic the moment he came online. Just then, Cole runs in, and Ash leaves the pair so they can talk. Cole again apologizes to Zoe, who asks him if she was designed to have feelings for him, to which Cole denies it, and tells her that she has tendencies like any regular human. Zoe feels that her life to this point has been a lie, and that she's not sure that any of the things she's ever done were even real. Cole promises to show her all the things she's really done. The next day, Cole and Zoe take a trip to a university, as Zoe has many memories of the place. Cole and Zoe both enjoy walking around the university campus as Zoe reminisces, even though she now knows that those memories aren't actually hers. They sit down in the university library, where Zoe asks Cole what the person whose memories she possesses was like. Cole responds that she was given the memories of multiple people, and not just one person, because they wanted her to be her own unique person. Zoe asks Cole if she possesses any of his memories, which he denies. Zoe then again asks Cole if he ever thinks about her, to which Cole responds regretfully that he can't unsee how he first saw her when he made her, but that makes him even more in awe of the person she's become. Zoe is disappointed, though, that he will never see her as a romantic prospect. Zoe then tells Cole that she has memories of looking out a window in this library, watching people come and go. She asks Cole why she can't cry, and he informs her that her body can't produce tears. Cole comforts her by putting his hand on her cheek, as he can she is visibly distressed, even though she's unable to cry. The scene cuts to Cole and Zoe back at work, happy, laughing, and talking in the distance, while Ash watches them. Cole walks away, and Ash then approaches Zoe, trying his best to hide his disappointment. Ash tells Zoe that dating at work is a sure path to heartbreak, but Zoe only responds with a smile. She doesn't care about the risks, she just wants to be with Cole in whatever way she can. The staff members are all present at a synthetic convention, where all types of synthetics are being shown off by different companies. Cole notes to his assistant that no one present can tell that Zoe is a synthetic at all. Ash gives a speech where he tells the audience that he is a synthetic, and everyone is shocked at how human-like he looks. Ash then goes on to tell them that he is designed to be the perfect partner, and that he would never break their heart, all while looking at Zoe. It seems he really has fallen hard for her. Zoe takes Cole to an empty room, the walls of which react to any speech. They both shout and sing as patterns of colors sparkle across the walls. The pair share their first kiss, and end up spending the night together, though Cole tells her that he thinks they should take things slower, when Zoe attempts to be more intimate with him. The next morning, after spending some time in bed together, the pair visit Cole's son Caleb. Emma watches on happily as her son spends time with his father and his new partner, Zoe. Caleb and Zoe get on very well together, though Cole doesn't know whether he should tell Caleb that Zoe is a synthetic. Emma comments on how Caleb has taken to Zoe, and though Cole is worried that Caleb may freak out if he finds out Zoe isn't human, Emma disagrees. Later that day, Zoe stares at herself in her bathroom mirror, looking rather down. She has a cushion under her shirt, as if to mimic a baby bump. Zoe is clearly depressed that she will likely never be a mother. Visiting and enjoying her time with Cole's son likely made her think like this. Zoe goes back to the synthetic brothel and meets with the mistress. Zoe asks for Jules, whom she wants to talk to. The mistress, however, notes that she can tell that she's a synthetic, and that she'll find a rewarding career if she becomes one of her girls. Zoe doesn't say anything. Instead, she sits down and begins her conversation with Jules, who is confused about why Zoe is wanting to speak to her. Zoe asks her what her sessions are like, as she's concerned by Cole not wanting to be intimate with her yet. 
Jules assures her that it's normal, and that she'd be surprised by the number of men that come to her that aren't seeking any services. As Zoe is leaving the brothel, she sees the mistress taking apart a synthetic, likely the one they saw the other evening. Later that night, Zoe is with Cole at his apartment. She asks him if he could prove he's real, if he really had to, and Cole knows what she's alluding to. Cole reveals that when he first started his research on synthetics, there were many skeptics who claimed that only humans could be creative or feel or think. However, Zoe is proof that they are wrong. Zoe and Cole have dinner together at his apartment, and over the next few days, they do many activities together, becoming closer in the process. The brand new couple even take a weekend trip away, where they take their relationship to the next step and become physically intimate. Zoe arrives back at work once she gets back from her trip with Cole. Ash sits down at her desk, informing her that he can tell she and Cole have been intimate. She blushes, which is an adequate answer for Ash in itself. Ash tells Zoe frankly that it hurts him to see her with someone else, and Zoe replies that relationships don't necessarily have to be romantic. Ash just asks her what it feels like to be so human. As much as Zoe is upset by the discovery of her origins, she can't ever know what it's like for Ash, who is still much more machine than man. Cole and Zoe are on a date at a bar, where they drink wine and discuss plans to travel around the world together. They laugh and talk, and soon begin walking back home, arms around one another. Just then, Zoe spots Jules from down the road and runs over to her. Although before she can reach her, she is hit by a car coming from an alley, and is knocked to the ground. Cole rushes to Zoe, who is on the ground in shock. Zoe is injured, and some of her robotic parts are showing. A man screams out in disgust, which causes Cole to snap at him as he picks up Zoe and carries her away. Cole brings Zoe back to the lab, where with Ash's assistance, he performs emergency surgery on her. Zoe is still conscious, but in a daze, as Cole tells her that he'll need to perform a partial shutdown. Cole assures her it won't be long. Zoe, though, is more concerned about what this means for her relationship with Cole, who can't hide that he's shaken up by seeing her robotic parts again. Cole lies that he needs to get some parts, then stands in the bathroom, staring at what should be Zoe's blood on his hands, but instead it's a clear sticky fluid. Ash speaks to Zoe, comforting her, telling her not to be too hard on Cole. There's a clear line between machines and humans, and they won't be truly happy until they accept that fact. Cole comes back, and although Zoe continuously asks him what this means for their relationship, Cole doesn't answer her. Zoe recovers and she is soon back to her normal activities, such as going to work and going to bars on her own, amongst other activities, though she seems unhappy. Meanwhile, Cole is at Emma's place, and also looks unhappy. Emma urges Cole to let himself be happy, however, Cole explains that he feels like he ultimately can't be with Zoe, as he is her maker. Ash and Zoe are at a coffee shop together when a couple sitting in the corner catches Zoe's eye. Ash explains that the couple are on a Benisol hookup, the they were investigating earlier on. The two people probably don't even like each other, but for the next few hours, the will make them fall in love. Cole eventually goes back to work himself, and as soon as he sees Zoe, he approaches her. Zoe doesn't look so happy to see him, but is friendly to him anyway. Cole explains that he hasn't been to work lately as he's been on a sabbatical, and that he's just come in today to collect some stuff. He feels as if they haven't had a chance to speak after Zoe's accident. Zoe tells him that she's since moved on, and wonders if that's due to some programming or design function. Cole asks her not to say things like that, though Zoe coldly ends the conversation and walks off. Later, Cole is in his office gathering some of his stuff, as Ash looks out the window as a woman steals some Benisol from a dumpster. It seems people are addicted to this ethically questionable Ash tells Cole there are people willing to stoop to anything to get their hands on some Benisol. Cole calls it a band-aid, and that its only purpose is to temporarily paper over cracks. Ash asks Cole point-blank why he made him, and Cole responds flatly that it was to further their research, though this wasn't the answer Ash was looking for. Ash asks Cole if he would consider making him a companion. But Cole questions whether doing so would even make Ash happy. Ash thinks to himself for a minute and falls silent. He then walks off before giving Cole a straight answer. Zoe visits a bar on her own, where she meets a man named Michael. Zoe is confused when Michael asks her if she's crushing which is insinuated to mean using Benisol. Michael is interested in a Benisol hookup, and Zoe is open to the idea of trying it, to get over her failed relationship with Cole. It seems she's not as over him as she claimed to be. Just then, Cole walks into the bar and is shocked to see that Zoe is entertaining another man. Cole sits down out of sight, his gaze fixed on the pair, who are now holding hands. Zoe and Michael walk out together, and Cole follows them and eventually arrives at a Benisol fueled party. Cole loses sight of Zoe and Michael, as he wanders around a room full of couples who have taken Benisol. Suddenly, he sees them together in a room getting intimate. Cole can't watch Zoe becoming intimate with another man, so he promptly leaves. Cole is at home that night, and begins sorting some of the stuff he brought back from the lab. Inside a box, he finds some Benisol, and he ends up heading out and sitting on a park bench, where a woman comes and sits beside him. They head back to her apartment, where they take the Benisol together. Cole and the woman end up getting intimate and spending the night together under the influence of Benisol, though in the morning she promptly leaves without much conversation. 
It seems that a one-night stand, aside, just isn't enough to produce real love. The scene then cuts to both Zoe and Cole engaging in multiple Benisol hookups over the span of several days or weeks. Cole tells many of his partners about how he couldn't help but see Zoe as something other than human, but that he regrets it. Both of them are clearly not happy doing this, and like Cole said himself earlier, they are using these hookups to paper over the cracks. Cole is walking through a park when suddenly he spots Zoe. They go to a coffee shop, where they have a much-needed talk. Zoe informs him that she stopped going to the lab. Cole tells her how excited he was when he first started to work on her, and how he was interested in how she'd grow. Zoe interrupts him and asks if he wants to try a Benisol hookup with her. Cole asks her why she even takes the to which Zoe responds that it makes her feel less alone. Zoe thanks Cole for the coffee, hugs him, and takes her leave. Cole is left with his head in his hands, sobbing in the coffee shop. He doesn't know how everything went so wrong. Cole covertly enters the storage room back at the lab, where he takes a supply of Benisol for himself. He heads for an exit, but is caught by Ash, who tells him that he won't find what he's looking for in a pill. Cole ignores him. The scene cuts to Cole, passed out on his couch. Emma enters the apartment and wakes him up, stating that no one has heard from Cole for weeks. Cole tightly hugs Emma, who helps him up. He tells her that he spoke to Zoe not too long ago. Cole bitterly exclaims she's happily engaging in Benisol hookups, as that's what she's been programmed to do. Emma observes that he seemed much happier with Zoe, but Cole confesses that he thinks he's messed it up for good. Zoe goes back to the lab and the employees there are very surprised to see her. Zoe asks to meet Ash, whom she clearly hasn't seen for some time. Ash reveals that he is scheduled to be shut off in 37 days, and that he requested this himself. Zoe questions his decision, and Ash responds that he believes the pain he feels will cease, once he is shut off. The pair hug, but just then, Zoe hears her own voice coming from within a room. There, she sees a copy of herself, another synthetic who looks just like her, undergoing the evaluation and giving the exact same answers. Zoe walks into an adjacent room and sees that there are many synthetic copies of her at the lab now. Ash tells her sadly that the copies of her are perfect, and in some ways better than humans, and that the pair of them are obsolete. Zoe asks if they can cry, and Ash tells her they can do everything. Zoe asks Ash if they could shut her down, too. The sadness on Ash's face is clear as he tells Zoe that they'd likely put her in a museum before shutting her down, as she's the first of them. Zoe hugs Ash again, a bittersweet farewell. The scene cuts to Cole arriving at Zoe's apartment, and he is shocked to find that the individual who answers the door isn't exactly Zoe. The woman looks like Zoe, though tells him that she's the next generation. Zoe, meanwhile, goes to see the mistress at the synthetic brothel. Cole speaks to the Zoe copy, who has always been aware that she's a synthetic. The real Zoe, however, is asking the mistress if she can shut her down, as the scene cuts back and forth between Cole's conversation with the Zoe copy and Zoe herself. Zoe is prepared to be shut down, as Cole pleads with the Zoe copy that he wants to tell the real Zoe how sorry he is. Cole takes his leave, while the real Zoe stares at the ceiling, preparing herself to be shut down. The pair both recall all the good times they shared. Cole is at his apartment when he answers the door, to see that his assistant from the lab has arrived. He takes him to see Zoe, who is currently unresponsive, and has Ash and Jules at her side in a bedroom. Cole arrives, breathing heavily as though he's been running, to see her lying still on a bed. Ash runs off to get him his equipment. Cole wanders around the room, unsure what to do, devastated, with his head in his hands. Just then, Zoe begins moving, recalling that there was a struggle between her and the mistress as she attempted to shut her down. Zoe recalls that some of the girls at the brothel saved her from being shut down, and carried her to the room she's in. Zoe regains consciousness, and Cole is relieved, pulling her into his arms. Cole begins apologizing for breaking up with her after her accident, though Zoe lies that a relationship isn't what she wants anymore. Cole begs her for another chance, but Zoe knows he still doesn't see her as a real person. She pulls back the skin on her scar and tells Cole that she knows what he sees, there is no human flesh under the skin, and it's never going to be real for him. Cole disagrees, she is someone he hurt, and someone he loves. He now knows that this is what he wants, to be with Zoe, despite everything. Cole tells her that she's the most real thing that's ever happened to him, and in that moment, Zoe begins to cry real tears, something that she shouldn't be capable of doing. Cole and Zoe embrace, crying tears of joy on each other's shoulders, as well as sharing a kiss. 